Okay, we're back at it. Um, we have the setup in place. So we have three positions for the input link. One, two, three for this function generator. One, two, three for this function generator. They're connected together so that uh, rotation of one link rotates the other, so we've got a single input. All right, so let's now do the synthesis. This is straightforward three position synthesis. So we'll connect the base here and intersect this point for this point. All right, um, we'll measure this angle from here to here and back. That's alpha, and we're going to copy that angle here from here to here and specify it as alpha. Alpha. All right, and that is. Uh, the inverted position of the fixed link. We'll now for the second position. Now we'll do it for the third position. Measure this angle from here to here. Back to the, oops, sorry, to the first position. And that's gamma. And then we're going to copy it onto the fixed link. From here to here. And that'll be gamma. There is the inverted position of the fixed link. Let's move this point out of the way. We can bring it back after we've done the synthesis. All right, so room here. All right, so we're now going to copy. We need this link. We need this link here. Oh, it'll be the same as this link. Okay, so I'll just do it there. Okay, so we'll copy this link from here to here, and we'll put it right there. All right, so there's now the inverted positions of the crank, and we now need inverted positions of the individual links. And this one here. Oh, no, no, oh, that's a mistake. Sorry about that. No, I actually have to me measure those angles. All right, so here, so we have to in that's because the rotation actually reorients those points, or those crank positions. So we have to measure them. So we measure it from here to here to here, and that gives us epsilon. And then we copy epsilon onto here. One, two, Epsilon, there we go. All right, so looks similar, but it's not. Um, okay, so and this is the second position. And then we measure the third position from here to here to here. And that is now eta. We copy that onto here. And you can see why I have to measure it, because the inverted positions of the um, fixed link will cause it to rotate. Right, this is going to be the inverted position. All right. Uh, good. Now, let me make some, clean this up just a little bit, get rid of these angles. Now, I have to choose a pivot in the fixed link. And I'm going to do it in a way that keeps it attached to the crank so that I can move things around. So, so I can move things around like this. So I'm going to put it, specify a point on this crank. Let's get the color I can see. Uh, so I can move it up and back like this. I'll be able to move it up and, oops. 
positive. Oh, it's, I see. It's on the uh, circle and not on the, on the crank that I want. So I'm going to move this up out of the way. Actually, I'm going to get rid of this circle. I don't need it. All right, so it doesn't cause, it doesn't cause confusion. Get rid of that. Okay, so I want a point on that crank. So it stays with that crank, and I can move it, move that point. No, now it's on that. All right, let's go we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. Clear it out. So then let's delete this. Let's hide this. Delete that point. Get the, move this out of the way so it doesn't. When we're putting the point on this link, it keeps attaching itself to other things. So we have to make sure that it's just on that link because we want to be able to move it up and down. All right, so we can now go back here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify an angle. So I'm going to do the usual thing. I'm going to create a slider. All right. And specify an angle. Oh, it's iota. Oh, no. So I don't want iota. So let me just create an angle somehow, just for no reason. I'm going to this one just to create iota. Get it out of the way. Let's see. Uh, I can never find iota. Okay, so let's specify a slider. I'll put it over here. Uh, the angle is now kappa. That's good. That's what I want. Okay, so now kappa is going to be the angle uh, from to this point um, from the fixed length. So that's going to allow me to measure kappa from here to here. That's why kappa. So that gives me a point here, and that now creates my pivot where I'm going to connect the coupler link. All right, so there it is. Now I can move this point around the link, and I can move it, change its length. And when I move the entire crank, that point will go with it. I won't have to worry about leaving it behind. All right. OK. Now what I want to do is I want to copy this pivot onto each of my links. So now that's easy to do because I can measure this distance here, place it there, this distance here, and place it here. And calculate the intersection here and the intersection here. And now I can calculate, measure the angle, copy the angle. So I'm going to copy the angle from here to here. That's going to be kappa. And that'll be my second position of the input crank. Make that red. And now measure kappa. I didn't see, I don't see the intersection, so let's try it again intersection here and here. Measure kappa from here to here. Kappa. And that, that's the third position of my input crank. Make that purple. Okay, so now I'm ready to do the synthesis. It's, let's construct the connect from this pivot to that pivot. We'll make it this uh, pale color. And we'll do it from here to here. Oh, I made a mistake there. Let me, let me undo all of this. So the, the polygon should go from here. Not that it matters, I guess, because it's the moving pivot that matters. But I want them to look the same so I can check them. So when I move this pivot up and down, I get the sun coming in.
Um, there we go. All right. Uh, so I can, and then I can sort of vary it in this direction too as well. So let's now put our segments on the map from here to here. Let's create our perpendicular bisectors. So that will be from here to here. And then from here to here, where they intersect is going to be the moving pivot on the in the first position, and so that will be this. We'll go from here to here, and then back again. And that'll be that point. Okay, now that's a big link, but it but that'll work. Let me clean this up a little bit, get rid of some of these. Let's see, get rid of some of this. I don't think we need these circles anymore. Because that's our first. Okay, that's our first function generator. And I'm going to just skip through to the skip the second function generator just so that we can uh, focus on what it is we need to do for the overall linkage. All right, so what are our cho choice? We can move our pivot around uh, into different places. So in fact, we can put it right here, which actually looks okay. And then that gives us a, uh, a coupler link that looks like this. So from the first position, oops. First position. Oh, I can't seem to get it. So if we're moving this around to here, I can move some of these things a little bit here. So might as well give us a little bit of space. And so I can get a Zoom in. So here's our coupler link. It goes from here to here. Make that blue. All right. Um, we're Going to have, we're going to have some work to do to actually build the linkage on top of that. But, but uh, I'm going to stop it now because this is the most complicated part. It's this three position synthesis of the uh, link. And I'll come back. I'm going to go ahead and uh, construct the uh, linkage for the three positions of the other mechanism and just and from that point on, go on to construct the mechanism. So I'm going to stop this now and then come back shortly.